Bono and welcome back to another one of these Women's Health Action Trust COVID-19 Digi Updates. It's Caitlin here again, our Digital Media Health Promotion Coordinator. Now, a couple of weeks ago, I made one of these podcast style videos talking about the Ministry of Health's recommendations for people who are pregnant right now or may have a newborn. Those guidelines have been updated now as they kind of seem to be updating them regularly as we move through levels and new information comes out. So I thought I would kind of make the video again and just keep you informed with the new changes and also just to shout out the link where um, you can read all of these for yourself. So again, I'll just be reading them out. So feel free to listen if you haven't got time to read these yourself. And yeah, this is just straight from the Ministry of Health's website. So this is the information for pregnant people and those who have recently given birth. Information on maternity care while you are pregnant and following the birth of your baby during the COVID-19 pandemic. This is interim guidance based on what we currently know about COVID-19 and the Ministry of Health will update it as new information is available. If you are pregnant or caring for newborn babies, it is understandable that you may be experiencing heightened levels of anxiety while New Zealand is working to stop the spread of COVID-19. This means your plans about where you would give birth and who you would support you may need to change. Your maternity care during your pregnancy will also be affected. Your midwife or lead maternity carer will do as much as possible over the phone or via video calling. Your midwife may decrease the number of face-to-face -face visits and will discuss with you the best place to have these. This is to protect you and your midwife from COVID-19 infection. With what we know at the moment, pregnant women do not appear to be any more susceptible to the consequences of COVID-19 infection than the general population. Pregnant women in their third trimester should take extra precautions and keep themselves well at a time when the growing baby means oxygen demands on the mother are higher. If you are more than 28 weeks pregnant, remember to take extra care. Keep two metres from people not in your bubble. Cough or sneeze into your elbow by covering your mouth and nose with tissues. Put used tissues in the bin or bag immediately. Wash your hands with soap and water often for at least 20 seconds. Avoid close contact with people who are unwell. Don't touch your eyes, nose or mouth if your hands are not clean. Clean and disinfect frequently touch surfaces and objects such as doorknobs. Stay home if you feel unwell and call Healthline on 0800 358 5453. If you are pregnant, get your free flu vaccine to reduce your risk of influenza. Note that the flu vaccine reduces risk of influenza, but it is not effective against COVID-19. If you are working, you should discuss and agree with your employer a plan to ensure that you are able to do your job safely, particularly during your last trimester. It is recommended that women in their third trimester not work where there is a high risk of being exposed to COVID-19, such as some healthcare settings. If you can't safely work at your workplace and can't work from home, you need to agree what your leave from work and pay arrangements will be with your employer. You can find further information on the Employment New Zealand website. These leave arrangements may be important to assure you remain eligible for the paid parental leave. Find out more about paid parental leave on the Ministry's website. Pregnant women with health conditions such as hypertension, high blood pressure, or difficult to control diabetes should follow the guidance outlined in guidance at alert level 3 for people at risk of severe illness because of age and or existing underlying health conditions, and we'll link that as well. Your midwife or midwifery practice will adjust the way they work to reduce the spread of COVID-19. Before any visit with your midwife, you will be expected to confirm that you are well. If you are not well, the visit may be postponed or take place via a phone or video call. If the visit is urgent, it will still take place, but your midwife will ask you to wear a surgical face mask, and your midwife will provide you with this. Your midwife may also wear some protect personal protective equipment themselves. If you've been contact traced due to potential exposure to COVID-19, or someone in your household is confirmed with COVID-19, you must tell your midwife or midwifery practice. If you've been diagnosed with COVID-19, confirmed or probable, be sure to inform your midwife or midwifery practice. If you've been contact traced and are less than 37 weeks pregnant, your midwife, GP, obstetrician or LMC may reschedule routine antenatal visits until you have fulfilled the criteria outlined by your local public health unit. You will be notified about this depending on your situation. Rescheduling of visits will only happen if your midwife assesses that your maternity care can be safely deferred. If you do need a visit from your midwife, you may need to wear a surgical face mask. Your midwife will provide you with this, and your midwife may wear some personal protective equipment themselves too. If you are more than 37 weeks pregnant, your midwife will continue antenatal visits according to the usual schedule. You may need to wear a surgical face mask during the visit. Your midwife will provide you with this, and your midwife may wear some personal protective equipment themselves. Your midwife will talk about your options in case you give birth before being cleared of COVID-19. 
This will include local options for labour and birth and your immediate postnatal care. If you develop symptoms of COVID-19, call Healthline on 0800 358 5453 and follow their advice while waiting for your test result. Healthline should be your first line of contact, then also let your midwife or GP or obstetrician LMC let you know if you become unwell. It is important to seek support where you can. This is usually possible through normal support structures like your antenatal classes, parenting education or parent support groups. As these may now be postponed, try to keep in touch with your whānau and friends regularly online. It's important to take care of yourself and that means taking care of your mental health as well. Face-to-face -face checkups. For most women, your face-to-face -face checkups will be reduced. Your midwife will still contact you over the phone or via video calling. You may be asked to attend checkups alone, which means no partners, family members or children, and you will be required to observe strict hygiene measures, including physical distancing. The physical assessments, blood pressure and checking your baby's growth and heart rate, will still occur, but will be done as quickly as possible. It's important you tell your midwife if you are unwell before any face-to-face -face visit. Your midwife may alter where she sees you for your visit, and she will talk about this with you prior to the visit. Care of older children during labour and birth. If you have older children, you will need to organise care for them when you go into labour. You must continue to follow the rules under the current alert level. However, it is recommended that you identify a trusted person who can be a part of your bubble to help care for older children. This person should not have contacts other than within your bubble. Maternity facilities, birthing or delivery suites in hospitals and birthing units in the community. Primary, second and tertiary maternity facilities will remain open to provide essential services during the COVID-19 pandemic. If you are due to give birth over the next few weeks, check with your midwife about the service level available at your local maternity facility. Maternity facilities will have restrictions on the number of visitors and support people you can have with you at your facility. This includes while you are in labour and if you need to stay as an inpatient before the birth of your baby or afterwards. This is important to help stop the spread of COVID-19. Reducing the number of people in the facility will help protect you, your whanau, your newborn baby, other patients in the hospital and the women's health staff looking after you. Some maternity facilities may need to limit the amount of time you can stay after your baby is born, however this decision will be based on clinical need. Your midwife or DHB community midwife will visit you at home as required and keep in touch with you by the phone or video to ensure you and your baby are well. Postnatal care during the COVID-19 pandemic. For most women, your face-to-face -face visits will be affected. Your midwife will do as much as possible over the phone or via video calling. Your midwife may decrease the number of face-to-face -face visits and will discuss with you the best place to have these. Your midwife may ask that no one else is present during checkups, no partners, no family members or no children, and you will be required to observe strict hygiene measures including physical distancing. The physical assessments of you and your baby will still occur but will be done as quickly as possible. If you have been identified as a close contact of a confirmed or probable case of COVID-19 or you develop flu-like symptoms and meet the updated case definition, for testing, you must tell your midwife or midwifery practice. If you have been diagnosed with COVID-19, either confirmed or probable, inform your midwife or midwifery practice. If you have been contact traced, meet the case definition, or you or someone in your household has been diagnosed with COVID-19, your midwife may reschedule routine postnatal visits until you have been advised by your local public health unit, Healthline, or your primary care provider that it is safe to recommence visits. The timing of this will depend on your particular situation. Deferring your visits will only happen if your midwife assesses that your postnatal care can be safely delayed. If you do need a visit from your midwife, you may need to wear a surgical face mask. Your midwife will provide you with this. Your midwife may also wear some personal protective equipment. Recommendations on handling of the whenua slash placenta for COVID confirmed or suspected women. If your whanau are planning on keeping their whenua slash placenta, the following is recommended. Thorough hand hygiene should be practiced at any time the placenta is being handled. It should be placed into a container or leak-proof bag or ipu. Consider biodegradable non-permeable bags to alleviate the double handling of the placenta. After it is first placed in the container, it should be then placed in a clean, non-permeable bag while wearing clean gloves. Wash hands with soap for a minimum of 20 seconds and thoroughly dry them, taking special care to not touch your face throughout the handling of the container or the placenta. Whenua to be taken from the place of birth as soon as possible by someone in the same bubble as the birthing woman. During alert level 2, 3 and 4, restrictions are in place regarding non-essential travel, 
Therefore, your placenta may need to be stored until such a time that the restrictions are lifted and it can be taken to a final destination. Consider burying it in a larger planter pot to be transplanted once travel restrictions are lifted. If it's in a non-degradable bag, it can be buried in that, but if it's in a non-biodegradable container, it is recommended that you remove it from the container prior to burial. Ensure you practice hand hygiene after any handling of the whenua, ipu container and bag. If the whenua slash placenta is not buried in a container or bag, then it must be disposed of immediately in a double plastic slash biodegradable bag. Wash your hands with soap for a minimum of 20 seconds and thoroughly dry them. Take special care not to touch your face throughout the handling of the container or placenta. Okay, so these are the ministry's guidelines for level 3. They're really similar to level 4, so not too much has changed. It's good to see that they have put out some information regarding safe handling of the placenta, if that's relevant for you and your Fano. And I will link all of this information into the description as well, so you can go and read it for yourself. And we will be coming at you soon with more COVID-19 updates. Until then, we hope you're staying well and safe in your bubble and enjoying the little bit of extra freedom that we've been afforded with Level 3. And we'll talk to you soon. Bye.